Buonasera, good evening everybody, and what a spectacular view. Let me say that really, Laura Denise and I, we are delighted uh, to welcome you back uh, to the Embassy of Italy for this third edition of the Roman Gala. And by the way, three is the perfect number, so it's quite a good omen, let me, let me tell you. We are honored that you've chosen once again the Italian Embassy to help celebrate the National Museum of Catholic Art and Library. And by the way, it's a very timely celebration as it comes only six days after the meeting in Rome of President Obama with the uh, Holy uh, Father. For over 20 years, the museum and its founder, uh, Mrs. Christina Cox, have strived to support Roman Catholic spiritual and religious art, and this, frankly, not only in the United States, but throughout the world. And together, they've championed the cause of promoting Christian art and literature, and have created many opportunities for dialogue and cultural exchange between different religions and beliefs. The two popes uh, whose uh, canonization we will celebrate uh, later this month, uh, Pope John XXIII and, of course, Pope John Paul II, were both, uh, how can I say, interfaith pilgrims uh, as well. And both of them, they strongly believed in opening towards other religions, and so the museum's mission is particularly time and perspective, perceptive. Now, on another note, looking at the other end of the hall, 
I trust that you all had a chance of uh, admire the reproduction of uh, Michelangelo's beautiful, spectacular Pietà, which, by the way, he sculpted when he was only 24. And this reproduction, together with the other works of art, uh, I believe truly adorns in a spectacular way the foyer here at the Italian Embassy. By the way, a reproduction which Archbishop Broglio just uh, blessed, and we are grateful for him for that. Uh, on a personal note, I, I'm a great lover of this particular masterpiece. Of course, the original one is in Rome, in St. Peter's uh, Basilica, as you enter to the right, quite a spectacular sight, let me tell you. Let me encourage you to go to Rome and visit, by the way, Michelangelo and the cathedral. So I was really impressed when I saw this copy just a few moments ago by the quality and the perfection of the execution and of the details. And I think this really adds tonight to the beauty of this uh, building. So tonight, as I said, we recognize and celebrate the work of the important Museum of Catholic Art and Library and the proclamation of saints of two great popes on April 27th in Rome. But we also celebrate the achievements of tonight's important awardees, which include, by the way, several personal uh, friends. So ladies and gentlemen, I would not wish to reinforce your notion that all diplomats do is just to love talking. This is not the case, so I will detract no more from your time, especially as we have a very rich program tonight with many distinguished speakers. However, before I do give the floor to Christina Cox and to Tim Barton, let me say a very warm grazie to all of you for being here tonight and enjoy tonight's gala. Thank you very much. I'm Timothy Barton, the chairman of the National Museum of Catholic Art and Library. I would like to welcome all of our excellencies, distinguished honorees, ladies and gentlemen, to our third annual Roman Gala. We are very honored to have so many wonderful guests to join us this evening. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to recognize one of our dear patrons, Ambassador Tom Milady, who was a tireless advocate of the Catholic causes around the world who passed this year. We hold him in our heart during this year's gala. In addition, we would also like to remember our dear founder, Mr. Ed Malloy, who was efficiently remembered by us as the original old blue eyes. And those blue eyes would always sparkle when it was time to go to work. And I'm humbled to follow in his footsteps. So Eddie, it's time to go to work. I hope that we can honor him in our festivities of this evening. Tonight, we have a wonderful group of honorees that we will uh, introduce to you shortly. And the museum's mission, I think it could never be more timely than it is today. In this era of tweets and Facebooks and likes and dislikes, where the entire world is pushed around by digital bits, where there's no emotion and no passion and no understanding of what Michelangelo felt as he molded the, 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 the life out of the statues that he created, I think it's very important for us to recognize the, the, the need for the museums so that we can encourage people to actually see and feel and touch some of the arts as opposed to the generations that we're seeing today that are afraid to even pick up a telephone and communicate directly. I often tell my, my children as well as my team to stop being afraid to call someone and just talk to people face to face. And that's really what the museum is. It's going to bring to life the, the reality of the history and the culture that is so important to all of us. And without it, I think it would be uh, a, a time where it would fade away in that culture, and this is one of the most important ways to keep that connection to the past and to the culture. So I would ask that we all try to have everyone to realize the importance of being able to see and touch the arts, and that's the reason for our museum. So I would ask that Christina Cox come up and enjoy the evening. Thank you. We are especially honored to have this under the patronage of the Ambassador to Italy and Mrs. Bizignero, and under the patronage of the Order of San 
of St. Martino, Prince Lorenzo de Medici. Through Art Divine, we have brought to you tonight a beautiful Michelangelo replica of the Pieta. It is great to, have, to honor Our Lady with her son Jesus in our presence of the Lenten season. Through Michelangelo, through the Med Medici family, being a patron of the arts inspires us. This is what we expect to see in the museum, fabulous works of art, a home for great artists such as Claudia Hecht and her beautiful work of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Luis Parada, who celebrates the canonization of Pope John the 23rd and Pope John the Second, Pope, Pope, Pope John Paul the Second, correct, at St. Peter's Basilica at April, on April 27th. We'd like to thank the donation of the rosaries, blessed by Pope Francis, by Will Watson and George Braun. We continue to raise funds for our museum and ask for your support to build the National Museum of Catholic Art and Library. As we continue to find the right location, we will need several million dollars to succeed. It will truly be a museum built by angels. It is truly an honor to have such a prestigious group of honorees tonight. I have been following the work of Archbishop Timothy Broglio, his dedication to the Catholic chaplains in the United States. I first became aware of the Archbishop's work through a mass at the Basilica of the National Shrine, the Immaculate Conception, for Father Capitano, who was a chaplain and has cause for sainthood. The, rule, the roles of the chaplains are such an important one. I urge you to support them. I was very impressed with his role, with the Archbishop's role as head of the Archdiocese of the Military Services USA. After the board voted to honor him with a Lifetime Achievement Award, the Archbishop inspires us to focus on men and women with similar gifts and talents, who save the arts, the, help the military, the universe, our country, the environment, and the respect for human rights. Ambassador Ray Flynn and former mayor of Boston, a devout, devout Catholic who was appointed U.S. Ambassador to the Holy See by President Bill Clinton, inspires us respect for life for the unborn. William Swanson inspires us that God is the universe. Raytheon, one of the major defense contracting companies, is a technology and innovation leader specializing in defense, security, and civil markets. And Under Secretary Frank Kendall inspires us at the Department of Defense as an individual who makes major decisions to protect God's world and the United States. For God so loved the earth he created, we invited Tremel Crow, a man devoted to saving the planet and educating us about saving the environment. So thank you for joining us tonight and being a part of our annual Roman Gala, and please. As Archbishop Broglio himself frequently remarks, he is the Archbishop of a diocese on which the sun never sets. A native of Ohio, Archbishop Broglio was ordained for the Diocese of Cleveland in 1977, and since that time has served the church in many capacities, most especially in the diplomatic corps, being assigned to apostolic nunciatures in Abidjan and Paraguay, as well as at the Secretary of State in Rome. Ordained a bishop in 2001, by the soon-to-be Saint John Paul II, Archbishop Broglio was appointed Archbishop for the Military Services by Pope Benedict XVI in 2007. Since his installation as Archbishop for the Military Services in 2008, Archbishop Broglio has visited military installations throughout the world, personally attending to the spiritual needs of our military personnel. As a matter of fact, this Easter, Archbishop Broglio will be ministering to our men and women assigned in Afghanistan. Archbishop Broglio will tell you that one of the greatest challenges he faces as Archbishop for the military services is to provide sufficient chaplains to serve our military personnel. 
a challenge which he has embraced, and through his dedicated efforts, has recruited a large number of seminarians for ministry in the Archdiocese for the military services, which, God willing, will increase the number of chaplains as the Archdiocese serves to faithfully attend to the pastoral and spiritual needs of our military personnel, and for which Archbishop Broglio is being honored at this third annual Roman Gala. Auguri Eccellenza, grazie a tutti. I'm very, very grateful to all of you for this opportunity and for the honor that you uh, have paid to the Archdiocese for Military Services. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cox, for your kindness, Monsignor Rossi, for your very generous introduction. When I was named the Archbishop for Military Services, the next day I had a reception in the nunciature in the Dominican Republic, and the vice dean of the diplomatic corps, who was at that point the ambassador of Venezuela, came up to me and he said, you know, it's true. There are no atheists in foxholes. I've had to modify my understanding of that statement a little bit in the six years that I've served as the Archbishop for Military Services, but one of the things that has impressed me is the faith of our men and women in uniform and their families, and also the commitment of the chaplains who serve them. As the Lord tells us, man does not live by bread alone. We also know how we are uplifted by culture, by art, by music, by so many of those other expressions. And so it is very fitting this evening that we pause and we think about uh, assuring that there is a proper museum for Catholic art and, and a library here in the nation's capital as a reminder of that other aspect of the human person. So again, thank you very much, Mrs. Cox, for this, I think, unmerited honor, and also congratulations to those who are honored with me because you really have earned the distinction. Thank you very much. You have a, a close friendship with Ambassador Ray Flynn. It turns out that he preceded me as ambassador to the Holy See, where he did a, a fantastic job, wrote a book about his experiences, and is to me a, a, an inspiration because of the principles that, that Ray espouses. And it, it doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, what's important to Ray Flynn is what, what you stand for and your value system and your integrity. And he, he sticks with that steadfastly, often uh, at, at, at personal expense, really, because of the uh, criticism that, that he gets in, in this tough, rum, you know, rough and tumble world of, of partisan politics. And uh, Ray stands up for the truth, and he stands up for the church. And uh, it's, been, it's just been one of the joys of my life uh, to get to know uh, my good friend Ray Flynn. And it's now uh, my honor to introduce to you our honoree ambassador, mayor, good college basketball player, Ray Flynn. Raven. This is a great honor to be among all you here this evening. Um, I, I just think that this is, uh, you know, when I was mayor of Boston, if you don't mind me saying this, I was kind of a streetwise mayor, streetwise Irish Catholic, democratic politician. And anybody who came to me with a favor or a request I was always there to help them. And uh, whether it's getting people uh, back on their feet or whatever it would be, mostly immigrant people, I was always trying to be there. That was my, my philosophy. And, uh, and then now, all of a sudden, I'm the United States ambassador. And you wouldn't believe the number of people 
from Boston and across the country who were familiar with my background and picked up the phone or sent a letter and expected me now as the United States ambassador to the Vatican to be the same kind of personality that I was as mayor. In other words, what they were looking for was not a job. They were looking for an appointment to sit down with John Paul II and have a conversation with him. And I got to be able to help a lot of people, and I saw in a lot of incredible people who just absolutely admired this man, Carol Wojtyla. And this was the, literally the highlight of their life. I was born in a Polish community in South Boston. I met Carol Wojtyla in September of 1969, so I knew him fairly well. And for me to be able to expedite and facilitate uh, these simple people to be able to meet with John Paul II was just the greatest accomplishment, the greatest thrill of my life. So to be able to receive this award because here's what I think about this museum. Not all these people that I represented as mayor that you know from the neighborhoods of America are going to be able to go to the Vatican. But if you get the Vatican treasures, and you bring them to the United States, maybe they'll be able to participate and experience some of those great, those great treasures. So Christina, this is very, very important what you're doing, the committee is doing. You're bringing the culture and the tradition of the Vatican that Jimmy Nicholson and I were lucky to experience, and you're bringing it right here to the United States so all of us can experience. And that's really what it's all about. So to the patrons here of this effort, uh, I just want to salute you, my dear friend here from Raytheon, the greatest corporate citizen of Massachusetts history, to be able to bring, to be able to support this effort. You're doing more than anything you could possibly imagine. People need this treasure and they need to be part of it. And in a small way, I'm so pleased to be able to accept this little bit of award, and I hope that we can come back here again and more and more and more Americans, Mr. Ambassador to Italy, more and more Americans can share in this unique treasure of Catholicism, Italian art right here, in the United States, Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good evening, uh, excellencies, dignitaries, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. I'm very honored to have been invited by the board of directors of the museum to present the award of an environmental award for leadership this year to Mr. Trammell Crow from Dallas. And he deserves it more than anybody because he has single-handedly, through his leadership and through his stewardship, created the largest platform to bring together private sector, government, civil society, and the public at large to bring consciousness to the world and solutions for the environment. And it's called Earth Day Texas. Regretfully and unfortunately, a few hours ago, right after we had lunch with him, he was called back to Dallas because his dear mother is deadly sick and he had to leave just before all of us arrived here. So um, I will take the liberty to accept this uh, wonderful award so deservedly for him on his behalf. Um, if I may receive it. Thank you for yes. taking this on behalf of Trammell Crow. Yes, I, re I accept this on... Thank you so much for your generous applause. And if I may add a private note uh, in your hearts to whenever it's convenient to you that all of us keep one prayer tonight or tomorrow for a speedy recovery for his dear mother who needs our prayers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Johan. It's a pleasure to have you here again. 
I have the distinct pleasure now to bring to the ambassador here in Italy one of his most famous families and a dear friend of ours, Prince Lorenzo de' Medici. Prince Lorenzo of the Medici family is an original descendant of the famous Medici dynasty. They are mostly known for their funding of the unique renaissance of Europe. The family has supported the, and the, the, uh, the most famous artists in the world, including Leonardo da Vinci, Christopher Columbus, and many others. The Medici dynasty is world famous, and the prince is carrying on this family dynasty tradition by supporting the arts, currently with the Lorenzo the Medici Art Gallery to support young art artists. Lorenzo established the art gallery to support young artists with creative projects that would typically not have access to. Uh, I thank the ambassador and the wife for the welcome because it's always nice to be in an Italian environment and have Italian food. And the waiters were speaking with me in Italian, so I was very emotional that they asked me water in Italian. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, you will, uh, of course, I have to make a little bit of bio about me and about my family. Um, I'm sure many of you know the Medici family. Uh, the Medici family was a merchant family, very, very old, that was starting their, uh, let's say, their uh, business with the trade of the orange, much earlier than the time of the Renaissance time. They were smart enough to understand that uh, um, in the market you have to adapt and change, so they went uh, to uh, the trading of the silk. So they were the first uh, family who colorated the silk and became very wealthy. At that point, uh, they understood that for uh, uh, having a trade, you need a bank, and they opened the Bank Medici, or Banco Medici. Uh, they were the first family who invented the way that uh, if you have to bring money from one side to another, you can maybe be robbed. So they create the promise of payment, who is the modern check. And uh, at the time, they had a uh, different venture, and they sent uh, the Medici family all over Europe, all over Italy. And uh, my family, uh, Medici, who a person I belongs, belongs to a little town called Martirano in the south of Italy, in the region of Calabria. The Medici were the biggest uh, silk uh, uh, company in Calabria in the 1400s. Um, in the town of Martirano, uh, the Medici created, uh, um, of course, a castle, and at the same time, because they were very Catholic, they had uh, un vescovato, where there was a bishop. And uh, the first bishop of uh, Jerusalem was from Martirano. So growing in a little town where the school uh, is called with the name of your ancestor, where the streets are called with the name of your ancestor, of course, uh, and my father give me the name of Lorenzo, to me, I, I was obliged to learn the story of my family. <laughs> and um, my father did not allow me to have uh, video games or computer, but only old book. And, so, uh, and at the same time, uh, have the opportunity to see paintings. Uh, of course, I was lucky enough to have uh, some of the famous uh, uh, masterpiece art of the Renaissance time. So I grew up uh, in a Catholic family and with the art. And this is why I bring it with me, this love. Um, through the journey of my life, I was, uh, my mother is Polish, from a Polish family. And uh, to be close to my grandmother Polish, I had to pass uh, during the communist time, some time in Poland, where for a Catholic, was unfortunately not possible to be free to pray and to go to the mass. So we had to go with my grandmother, my grandfather, who was supporter there secretly uh, during the snow. So I was uh, young, but I remember very well. And I always wanted one day to give opportunity to other people to don't experience the same things that as a Catholic, as a grown Catholic, I have experienced when I was young. And so uh, I'm very happy to be in Washington today and to be part of this project. Because through the art, uh, new generation will ask themselves uh, maybe why Michelangelo was doing the Pietà. What was in his inspiration in that moment? And we all look in a modern way a movie, and uh, we analyze the movie. Uh, the art was for the De Medici family and for the Renaissance a way of being uh, kind of advertising of the modern time. The generation will understand that if you give a story or you tell them how to look a piece of art, and in this case, 
many Americans don't have a possibility to go overseas to see the beauty of the Italian. So if we can bring here in Washington DC the possibility to see some of the art that we Italy are lucky to uh, have, I'm sure that uh, many people will start uh, asking why Michelangelo creates such a beauty in the eyes of uh, Mary. And uh, we are giving back something to my ancestor and to our culture. And um, I would love to bring uh, a present to them from Rome. Um, I am a um, Gran Priore, great magister of a Catholic order in Rome with a beautiful church called San Silvestro Quirinale. San Silvestro Quirinale is a church where Michelangelo was spending the evening thinking how to create some of his masterpiece. And um, as a modern uh, knight, people will ask me, sometimes ask me, what does it mean be a knight in the modern time? Be a knight in the modern time means uh, we don't have more the sword as we were having at that time to defend our religion, but today we still have people in Africa mostly that don't have opportunity to be free to pray in the way other religions have. So I think that uh, little support to eventually save the African church, this is a way I'm uh, creating now a new project, uh, maybe putting cameras or instruments that people can see what really a lot of Catholic people cannot be free to pray will be my next uh, uh, focus project and with my Knights Order. And I would love to invite Timothy Barton here to award him with uh, um, an Academy of my Knights Order because of his support for the museum and so for the Catholic culture and art. And uh, I, th this is uh, for you. Oh, thank you. Exactly. And of course, as a modern, uh, modern knight uh, in uh, our order, there is no difference between men and women. Because I think uh, uh, that women are much more intelligent than men. And so uh, I think that we should learn from women. And uh, in my order, uh, women and men, we sit together. There is no, nobody who is more important than the other. And we decide what to do when we meet. And we meet once a month. We have, of course, our priest who is telling us how to behave better, how to see that the world has to be seen by, without envy and try to understand that the value that our grand grandfather and our pope in this moment, uh, the great pope is giving help to us because he is very, very, is one of the, of the people who is teaching to the people how to be really uh, nice in value. And so we're very helpful for uh, the Holy Father. And I want to give as well uh, a night to Cristina as a Knights of the Order of San Martin from Rome. Thank you. So, thank you very much for all of you and to support the museum. Grazie. I would just like the Prince, and thank you very much. I'm sure Tim and I really appreciate to be part of the Order of San Martino in Rome. Um, if the Prince would be so um, gracious to please present our two Artist Awards. The first award goes to Miss Claudia Hecht. <laughs> Claudia's work, known Claudia for many years, she's an international artist. She is good at carving, painting. She can do commissions for large buildings. She's a real talent. And because of her international status, I'd like to award have the Prince Award to Claudia. I have been lucky to meet a lot of artists, uh, but uh, every artist uh, has to have the space for show their art. In this case, we have two artists that tonight have the opportunity to show their great art, uh, who will make us thinking. So as uh, a patron of the art, as my ancestor were, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, for this very important distinguished for me, I'm a Catholic. Uh, I was raised uh, in Mexico. Um, basically, all my education uh, was in a Catholic school. And I started painting when I was, uh, it was about 25 years ago when I started. And it's been a beautiful experience for me uh, working in the art because it's the, like, I feel it's like the expression of the soul and for me to paint or do a sculpture, 
Uh, I have one piece that couldn't make it for tonight, but uh, for me it's like the expression of whatever is inside your heart and your, in, and your feelings in that moment. And I'm very pleased and proud to be here tonight with all of you. Thank you very much. Our other national award for the arts is Louise Peralta. Louise, would you come up? I would love to thank you for your work, your time, and to give to us such a great... Uh, I would love that you explain, as you explained to me before, in two seconds, the meaning of your painting, because it's very important to have from the artist the way he presents to us so we can see after with our eyes, but it's important, so please. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening, everyone, and first of all, I want to thank everyone for being here today. Uh, you could be anywhere, but you decided to come and celebrate the National Museum of Catholic Art and History. Uh, before, I want to also thank um, Christina for the work that she's doing. I met her, I think, in 2007, and I can truly say that ever since I met her, I don't think she's ever taken a break. And I do also agree with the Prince that women are smarter than men. So uh, saying that, um, I started doing art at the age of 13, um, started doing graffiti in the streets of D.C., and I never really knew, or I didn't grow up in a Catholic family, I didn't grow up going to church, but something in me always led me to create religious works of art, even when I didn't do, know much about God. Uh, and the journey has been great. Um, the three paintings that we have here today are what I call uh, the church in action, because I don't really like to do traditional portraits where you see usually the, uh, the Pope or the religious figures uh, standing or sitting with their arms crossed, but instead, I like to see them moving. And I grew up learning about John Paul II II. I say that, Don, I just want to thank everybody for being here. It's a great honor for us, for me to be here. And I think that art, um, you know, if you listen to the news, they want to eliminate the Ten Commandments from different buildings. They want to eliminate it from the schools. Sometimes they don't allow prayers in school. But art is one of the things that can take any set group of people and bring them together. And sometimes we may not agree on everything and all the, all the theological things, but one thing that we can agree on is that art can definitely bring people together and that God uses us as teaching tools. So thank you all for everything, and thank you, Christina and the board. So the next person I would like to introduce is Dr. John Amory who is the CEO of CSIS, one of the biggest think tanks in Washington. They just moved into a beautiful bu building in Rhode Island. And um, he has some very interesting uh, lectures there, which um, I, I tell, urge all of you to, to come and uh, meet John. And he'd like to introduce the last uh, honorees. Good evening, everyone. And uh, Ambassador, thank you for making available this spectacular space. Uh, it's the power of the embassy is uh, everywhere, and we, are, we thank you for that. My, my role tonight is to introduce to you uh, Bill Swanson. Bill is the recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award. I don't need to recount his resume. It's, it's available to you. It's in this program. My role is to give you maybe just one insight into the character of this man. Uh, Bill is, uh, he has the, the, the mind uh, of an engineer, but he's got the soul of an artist. Um, Bill started at Raytheon at the bottom uh, and worked his way up. This is unusual in corporate America. And, and there were setbacks along the way. But it was his character, his perseverance, and his genuine leadership qualities that brought him to the top. But Bill is also an artist, and his artistry is in food. Bill is a, is a gourmet chef, cook. You wouldn't think that of a CEO. Uh, but it, it, again, it's that, that deep spirit that's inside of him that I think resonates and has made him such an effective leader in the defense community where we've known each other for 20 years. He's well known for being the author of uh, a little guide, 33 things to do to be a good leader. 
And one of them stands out. And that's when he talks, it's about the waiter principle. And he says, the judge of a person's character is how they treat the waiter, how they treat the support staff. And he said, any person who is generous and kind to you, but is cold and abusive to a waiter, is not a good man. And I think it's a, it's a sense and an insight into this man, and it's why you've chosen to recognize him tonight with this Lifetime Achievement Award. Would you, with your applause, please welcome this remarkable leader, Bill Swenson. Thank you, John, for those kind words, and thank you, everyone. I'm pleased to accept this award on behalf of my 63,000 teammates uh, across the country. I'd also like to thank the National Museum of Catholic Art and Library and its Board of Trustees for this great honor. I'd also like to thank our hosts for organizing tonight's celebration, the Italian Ambassador and his wife, and the Gala Chairman, Mayor Gray, and Chairman uh, Christina Cox. I'd also like to congratulate tonight's honorees, Archbishop Rolio, Ambassador Flynn, Tramil Crow, and Prince Lorenzo de Michi. Uh, you really, it, this is really a thrill for me, and I especially want to thank uh, Secretary Kendall, who I have the privilege of, of working with, and to be in the same category with all of you is a thrill. The, the one thing I should mention, there's a little bit of a Boston connection here. The Archbishop went to, went to Boston College. Of course, we have Mayor Flynn, and we have Secretary Kendall, who was with me in Boston. So there are four of us. And Prince, you're welcome to come anytime you want to be part of this very select group. Uh, this is a special award for me, and I just wish all the priests and nuns at St. Mary's uh, grammar school could uh, be here this evening and kind of realize what they kind of created, uh, even though they probably wouldn't believe it if they were here. Uh, this recognition is so humbling. You see, I always thought growing up in, as a young man in the central coast of, of California that uh, uh, things like this wouldn't happen. Yet through my education, my strong values that were passed down from my family and my church, I've been so very fortunate in my life and in my career. Um, as John mentioned, I joined Raytheon right out of college with an engineering degree and rose from the factory floor to the corner office. And as I like to tell individuals, I say, only in America. This has given me an opportunity to meet leaders in countless fields from around the world, like all of you here this evening, who are the best at what you do. And since we're in the Italian embassy, I have to mention that there's one place that my wife Cheryl and I like to go, and that's Italy. Uh, Cheryl, for the art, the culture, and the food. For me, being an engineer, I prefer Marinello. If you know about cars, you'll know what I mean. So in closing, it's really a great honor to be recognized with this prestigious award, and it's, it's a privilege to play a part in helping make this new museum promoting art and supporting artists a reality. Thank you all, and God bless. Uh, say a few words to introduce to you Frank Kendall. Frank is the recipient this year for the Leadership Award. Um, we first worked together. Uh, I was the Deputy Secretary of Defense at the time. Frank was in charge of acquisition for the Army. And uh, we got to know each other then, but I didn't really know Frank Kendall then. Uh, I left and went to this think tank. Frank uh, left and went to law school. And I'll tell you a bit about that in just a second. Frank is the uh, undersecretary uh, for acquisition. There are five undersecretaries in the Defense Department. There's an undersecretary for ideas, policy, sec undersecretary for money, an undersecretary for people, an undersecretary for secrets, and an undersecretary for things. 
And Frank is the undersecretary for things. He buys things. And he, so he's got this enormous role in the department to ensure that we buy what is needed so that our personnel can carry out their missions, carry out those missions successfully. He's doing a splendid job. This is remarkable. And, you know, we began the evening with a blessing of the Pieta. I think it would be valuable to just take a minute to reflect on the words that were written in the 25th chapter of Matthew. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was in prison, and you came to me. His disciples said, Lord, when, when did we feed you when you were hungry? When did we give you something to drink when you were thirsty? When did we clothe you? When did we visit you? And Jesus said, when you did this, these things for the least of our brothers and sisters, you did them for me. Frank chose to be a pro bono lawyer so that he could serve the most vulnerable and weak people in the world. And I think we should, with our applause, thank him for that. Thank you. Uh, this is something that I heard John say in a speech about 25 years ago. And it connects, in a way, the art side of what I just talked about, that memory, to what I do today, uh, what I'm going to continue to be doing. John told the story as the Soviet Union was beginning to disintegrate. And he told about, uh, and I'm going to get this perhaps not exactly accurate, but it'll be very close. He told a story about a group of people who were allowed, as the borders were opening up, to leave one of the Iron Curtain, behind the Iron Curtain, move, move to the west. And I think this, this family came out of Hungary on a train, one of the earliest trains, if you remember back that. There was sort of a breakthrough, and a train started to move, and people were able to move across the borders more freely. The train came, I think, to uh, Vienna and Austria. And they were pressed there, of course, to meet people as they got off the train. And in the way that the press likes to do, somebody came up and put a microphone in front of you know, this little family, uh, a man and a woman, some children, in the face of the, of the family and said, tell us how you feel. Uh, and they kind of looked back in shock. And then the woman gathered herself and she said, there is something I want to say. I'll get choked up when I say this, I'm sorry. But there's something I want to say to the people in America. And this is equally true for our Italian friends and all of our NATO members. I want to say to the people in America, thank you for keeping a place free for us. If, if, people, are going, if people are going to be free to start institutions like the Museum of Catholic Art and Library, if people are going to be free to enjoy all the freedoms that we have today, that work is not quite done. As recent events show, there are plenty of people around the world who do not enjoy our freedom. So I'm very honored tonight, Christina, uh, Ambassador, uh, to be honored by this award. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody um, for listening to all the speeches, these wonderful honorees, especially our host, the Ambassador, uh, and his wife. And, um, Dessert is coming. I want everyone to meet and greet, have coffee, have more wine. It's time to enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, Tim, oh, we want to thank the staff, right? Thank, thank you to all the staff for all the hard work you've done and everybody that worked on the event tonight. Thank you very much. A round of applause for everybody yes. that did it. All and, the people, thank you so much. And, and